Welcome to One Community Church. I seem to be on today. I hope you are too. We come to this particular time of the year in which we prepare our hearts quickly for Easter, if we, especially if we haven't in weeks gone by. Our time is drawing short for our preparation. Today is a good day to open our hearts wider as we worship the living God at the table, baptismal font is ready to receive us as we celebrate our faith and the covenant that God has made with us and we have made with him. Some of the announcements for this week unfold as we get ready for Holy Week. We invite you to be participants in helping others through our outreach ministry next Sunday especially. We want you to invite everyone that you know. Kids, youth, Sunday school, uh, to kid, uh, Sunday school, adults here to worship, folks to tune online. And of course, we will be having a petting zoo in our back parking lot. A couple of things you will need to know about next Sunday, Palm Sunday that begins Holy Week, is that we would like for you to park in the city parking lot, if you're able, uh, so that those uh, guests may have uh, better parking closer to the church, and uh, also uh, as visitors are there, and those that might need to park closer to the church as well. Uh, so look out for new... Um, guests and welcome them next week during our worship service as there is a push and an opportunity to see new faces. Uh, grab a cup of coffee and, and encourage others to do as well. And if you notice someone that's a visitor, make sure they get a, a, a visitor bag in our fellowship hall. All kinds of volunteers are needed if you haven't volunteered and would like to. Greeters, ushers, parking lot roamers, uh, for the petting zoo. Uh, this will uh, st all start around nine o'clock and run uh, through both our services till noon. If you'd like to know more, Julie in our office uh, is kind of putting this all together and uh, helping us uh, with this wonderful outreach ministry. You can either mail, uh, email her or there is a volunteer list in the fellowship hall if you'd like to sign up for that. I encourage you to wear your blue uh, one Community T-shirt. If you don't have one, don't worry, we've got plenty. We'll be glad to suit you up uh, for this wonderful opportunity of outreach next Sunday for Palm Sunday. Holy Week begins next Sunday. It's hard to believe. And we'll be having a special time here of recognizing the palms and we will also on Thursday be having a new service for our church, a Maundy Thursday service, which will be remembering how Jesus uh, washed his disciples. Uh, he washed their feet, and we're going to wash each other's hands. And then Jesus also gave the Last, uh, their, the, the last Supper, instituted that. And so we will be partaking of the Lord's table as well next Thursday, a week from Thursday in Holy Week. Good Friday service. Last year was uh, wonderful music, scriptures. We'll be doing that again this Good Friday at seven o'clock. And who can think of the wonders that lie ahead for us on Easter Sunday as we gather to celebrate our faith in a risen Christ? Let us begin now as we still our hearts with music, as we wait for the presence of God to speak to our hearts. Thank you. 
hear our call to worship as we read back and forth and celebrate our time of being together in God's house. Come, friends, and sit with him who cares for family and strangers alike. We gather with the one whose lavish love has been poured out for all. Let us bring to him our best and pour out our lives as a gift to him. May our hearts be open to the beauty of Christ's presence as we worship in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. God of love, you have loved us first and continue to love us lavishly. We come this morning longing to love you in return. We hunger for your healing love in our lives as we long to love ourselves and our neighbors. Fill our longing hearts as we join together to worship you so that we may pour out our lives as an offering of praise and love for you in this world. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us stand and sing our first hymn today, Jesus Paid It All. Hear our call to confession. In the name of Christ, the Apostle Paul says, I urge you to be reconciled to God. Join with me as we read together our confession. God of mercy, you sent Jesus Christ to seek and save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and turned aside from your way. We are misled by pride, for we are see ourselves pure when we are stained and great when we are small. We have failed in love, neglected justice, and ignored your truth. Have mercy, O God, and forgive our sins. Return us to paths of righteousness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. From the old Hebrew prophet Isaiah. Listen, so that you may live. 
The steadfast love of the Lord never fails. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our reading of sacred scripture today comes to us as we pray. Let us open our hearts for the Spirit's guidance before we hear our scripture. Gracious God, our way in the wilderness, guide us by your word through these 40 days and minister to us with your Holy Spirit so that we may reform, restore, and renew our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading of sacred scripture today comes from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 12, beginning in the first verses. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet, wiped his feet with her hair, the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Praise the Lord. Mm. Beautiful. Let us pray. Lord, now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Beautiful flowers here are given in memory of Chris Grimes. His service of memorial service was yesterday here in our church. He's a son of Opal Singer. I couldn't help but think of these beautiful flowers and all the flowers that are jumping out of the ground these days. Of course, the crocuses, the, all the... Um, we used to call them Easter flowers. The uh, beautiful uh, jonquils are coming up and the smells of the hyacinths. Hmm. Spring. According to the calendar, we are in spring, but yet today we wake up to frosty snow, uh, frost and maybe a little snow flurry here and there this past week, of course. We're on the verge of warmth, though, aren't we? We're on the verge of blooming colors. The song of birds will soon be upon us. And one more thing, which I think is the greatest gift of spring, beyond the greening, the blooming, the warming, the fragrance. The fragrance is waiting for us. We will open our windows or step outside and find ourselves breathing in this new, sweet, fresh aroma of spring. I can't wait. How would you describe that fragrance? And where does it come from? Well, it's a concussion of blended smells. 
It's the ground itself. What's hardened underground during the cold of winter begins to warm and release the rich, loamy smells of earth. And with that is mixed in the fragrance of blossoms and the warming of plant life. And last year's leaves and grasses decaying sweetly. And it's the promise of spring rain. It's delicious. Now imagine this. Imagine all of that fragrance of spring blowing into this room right now. Subtly at first, but then truly, powerfully, overwhelmingly, this sweetness and freshness of spring fragrance. The air that is thick with it, and all of us breathing it in. I'd have to stop talking and sit down. And I think many of us would close our eyes and just savor it. This image came to my mind this week as I reflected on our gospel story that we just heard. A story about fragrance filling up the house. It happened at springtime though it didn't happen to be the fragrance of spring, it was beautiful and powerful, and everybody there was breathing it in. But oddly enough, when some smelled it, they grew angry. And oddly enough, if some of us had been there, we too would have been very uncomfortable. Here's the story. A family invites Jesus to dinner. The family is made up of two sisters and their brother. There's Martha and La Mary and Lazarus. They're all friends of Jesus. This family has had a recent experience with Jesus that, to say the least, was extraordinary. Because one of them had been recently dead. Lazarus, the brother, had been dead four days in the grave. And Jesus had come and called him out of his grave, and he came out and was alive. Well now, the family has Jesus over for dinner. And there sits Lazarus, thinking God knows only what. And there is Jesus and his disciples. And here's Martha, coming in and out of the room, serving the meal. But where's Mary? Oh, there she is, standing in the doorway with something in her hand. It's an alabaster jar, and it's filled with perfume. And not just any perfume. <laughs> no drugstore perfume here. This is the most expensive we can imagine. It's imported from India. It cost a great deal. She has, according to the text, a whole pound of it in that jar. It's like a quart of Chanel number no. five. And this is what she does. She walks toward Jesus, she kneels at his feet, 
she begins pouring out the perfume and she doesn't stop. She really ought to stop. This is very expensive. Just a little bit of this kind of perfume will do. And she doesn't stop. She just gently, slowly keeps pouring and pouring till all of it, every last drop, is gone. And the whole house is filled with its fragrance. And that's not all. She uncovers her head and begins letting down her long, long hair. Now this is the Middle East, mind you. And in her culture, a woman didn't let her hair down for anybody but her husband. And here's this room full of men, and she's letting down her long hair, and she's cupping his feet in her hand, and begins wiping his feet with the perfume. She has lavishly perfumed his feet, now she is outrageously perfuming her hair, wiping his ankles and his feet. Is anybody blushing in this house? I'd be blushing. I'd be squirming. Somebody in that room did more than squirm and blush. He was furious. He was morally offended. Judas Iscariot was furious. He calculated the worth and what he knew it was worth in his words, 300 denarii. And what 300 denarii equals is almost a year's full wages for a laboring man. That cost almost a year's worth of wage. We should have sold it and given the money to feed the poor. And he's right, isn't he? I, I mean, no wonder he's offended. Jesus' teaching about caring for the poor is unmistakable. It's uncompromising. He said, sell everything you've got and give it to the poor. Now here is shamelessly contradicting himself, letting his friend, this woman, in the excessiveness of devotion, pour all of that on him. Now the writer of the story adds that Judas wasn't really concerned about the poor. That in fact, he was in the habit of stealing from the common purse. So sure, he's a hypocrite, and he's playing the game that many of us still play, being all high-minded about somebody else's money. It's worth pointing out though, that two of our Gospels tell the same story and don't single out Judas as the complainer, but mentions that a number of the disciples also said this should have been sold and given to the poor. Did it not occur to them that she was making herself one of the poor? Didn't it occur to them that Jesus was poor and she was caring for him? Regardless, they had shrunk the gospel of Jesus down to ethics. 
a rendition which many of us still make. Brittle, tunnel vision, moralist, judging other people who bring different kinds of gifts. Jesus says, leave her alone. Aren't those beautiful words? Isn't he saying it all, over all kinds of people that some of us would prefer to judge? Leave her alone. Don't dare criticize her for expressing her faith and her love in ways that you would never think to do. Because she has seen something that you have not seen. She has seen that I am dying. And this is her gift for my burial. You see, it wasn't rare that people in those days were anointed with scented oil. It could be done to any honored guest at a meal or to confer blessing and power on a priest or a king or a prophet. But all this anointing was done on the head. Only one kind of occasion was it done upon the feet. Only at death. Only a corpse's feet were anointed and she knew five days and he would be dead. And she not only foresaw it, she somehow understood that deep nature of it. He would be poured out, lifted up, and he would willingly pour out all his love and all his life with all his love, till it was all gone. Such an excessiveness of love emptied out, looking for all the world like a tragic waste. But in fact, a gift of changing the whole world beauty of love beyond belief, of fragrance to fill the whole world. Leave her alone, he said. She sees my death and she answers it in poured out love of her life. And you you will have the poor with you always, do have them with you, and you show your love the way she showed my love, with beautiful abandon, and you will have each other always. Show your love for one another the way she has shown my love. Pour out yourselves for each other. In two or three days, he would be there in this room again, in another room, and what would he do? But go to the floor, cup their feet in his hands, and wash their feet and say, this is what discipleship looks like. Do you remember? Be to each other what this is. And he didn't say this to them, but I think he may very well say it to us. You have your lives, your own personal life under God. You have your own gifts and your own heart's experience. 
You have your dreams and desires. You have every possibility of love in you. Do not measure it out in little spoonfuls. Pay no attention to the critics around you or the worst critic that lives inside you and do not measure your life against what is the norm of carefulness and safety and sensibility. Pour it all out. Pour out your life and your love for God's sake, for each other's sake, for your own sweet sake. This is how God in Christ has loved us, loved us all. Why would we live with caution and judging and measuring. What if we all began living more and more in that simplicity and freedom of just pouring out our devotion and love? I think it might be something like finding ourselves breathing in at last something very like the fragrance of spring. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary.
may be seated. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we bring our gifts to you and offer them as symbol and sacrifice and service. We seek to share the story of suffering love that fulfills and conquers death. Bless our giving, O oh God, of our time, our talents, and our treasures for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Use our wealth and our time and our abilities for the good of all your people, O oh Lord. For where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. Let us offer our lives unto the Lord now. Amen. We come to the Lord's table, as is our custom here in this church, the first Sunday of the month to have fellowship with the Lord. It is his table, and Jesus invites you to participate. Good morning. Good morning. Jesus, ooh, I'm hot. <laughs> Jesus was always a guest. Um, I would add that in his day, very often all the leaders and those in authority, and to this day, thought that maybe Jesus was always a guest in places he ought not to be. And I challenge that Jesus was a guest on purpose. So, let me take a look here. Jesus was always the guest. In the homes of Peter and Jairus, Martha and Mary, he was always the guest. At the meal tables of the wealthy, where he pleaded the, pled the cause, causes of the poor, he was always the guest, upsetting polite company, befriending isolated people, welcoming the stranger, Jesus was always the guest. But here at this table, he is the host, and Jesus invites you to come. So come, you who hunger and thirst for a deeper faith, for a fuller life, for a fairer world, Jesus Christ, who has sat at our tables, now invites us to be his guest. Let us pray. O holy God, how wonderful is the work of your hands. When sin had scarred the world, you entered into covenant to renew the whole creation. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, as a father joyfully welcomes his own, you embraced the people as your own, and you filled them with a longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. Through countless generations, your people hungered for the bread of freedom. From them you raised up Jesus, your son, the living bread, in whom ancient hungers are satisfied. He healed the sick, though he himself would suffer. He offered life to sinners, though death would hunt him down. But with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms and surrendered his spirit. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the sharing of the bread that we break and the cups that we bless may be for us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may attain the unity of the faith and grow up in all things into Christ our Lord. And as the grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, Lord Jesus. Amen. You don't have to be a member of this church or any church to partake with us. We ask that you hold the elements until the end and we'll take them into communion. The night of that Passover Sunday, supper, um, the Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body, given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In that same way, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, 
sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Please take the bread. The body of Christ broken for you. Salvation sealed in his blood. Pastor Steve, will you pray for us? God of compassion, we praise you that you look upon us and our frail lives with love and understanding, and that you desire for us all new life in Jesus Christ. We are overwhelmed by your love, which goes to the cross for us, endures the grave, and leads us to new life. By your Spirit, strengthen our souls to be brave and bold in Christ's service. Take our offerings and use them and us for your purpose. Bless these crosses of palms that will be used next Sunday for remembrance that you are the Great One and that you have died on a cross for us. Hear our prayers, O Lord, this day. Use us. In the name of Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, we pray. Amen. Let us stand and sing a closing hymn. You may be seated. I want to thank those of you who have tuned us in online today for worship. We hope that you will continue, especially as we enter into this holy season of Holy Week. And please make arrangements to join us on Easter Sunday as we have our grand celebration of our resurrected Lord here at 945 and at 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning us in. We come